Happy Thanksgiving, Cowboys Nation. Welcome into Hit Sticks from the Star in Frisco with Barry Church, Isaiah Stanback. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Glad you're with us. It's Thanksgiving week. It's the Cowboys and the Commanders. We got to take a look at what happened in the Cowboys win last week to start off. Welcome into Hit Sticks as we take a look back at the Carolina Panthers win and of course look ahead to the matchup with the Washington Commanders for your Dallas Cowboys. Let's take a look at one of the crucial plays early in this matchup. It was Dak Prescott up the seam to Luke Schoonmaker. We've seen it a couple times work out to where Dak puts the throw on the money. Jake Ferguson's made a grab like that, but then a couple of these tight ends, Ferguson, Schoonmaker included, will have drops at the goal line. Schoonmaker held on for this one into double coverage, took a hit as he held on to the football, but it was a touchdown. So we're going to recreate this on Madden. So there's Schoonmaker in this bunch set to the right-hand side. You've got a couple things to look out for here on this play, but Isaiah, basically, how did this one work out for the Cowboys when in the past it hasn't necessarily worked out? Well, you're talking about in the past, you know, early on in the season, the tight end group all of it, as, as a whole was just missing opportunities yeah. in the red zone. And now all of a sudden you come down here and you get the chance to run it back one time in week 11, and all of a sudden uh, things just miraculously happen, okay? <laughs> Reps matter in this league, and cover three versus seams are not the mm -hmm. best situations for the defense, but it's great for the offense. DCBC, I know your safeties as a single guy back there, you hate seeing those scenes come at you from both sides. Oh, you hate to see it, because as a safety, you're responsible for inside the numbers, and that could be a vast um, yardage when you talk about it. And if the quarterback looks you off like Dak Prescott did a great job in that game of doing, it'll make you that much of a step late getting mm -hmm. to that scene by schoolmaker and we saw it happen there you hate to be in cover three when you got two seams screaming at you up the field. Well let's see if we can make it happen again on the Madden. Here we go. Uh, there it, there is. it is all there day is. long. Put that man in a deal, pickle, and a predicament. Let's go ahead and run it back one time so you guys can see it on the replay so you guys can actually have a visual to what Mr. DCBC was just talking about in terms of the struggle bus that this safety is in. Okay, so as we go to the safety, let's swing it around so you guys can see the stress that he is under. Okay, now this is all his space. He is responsible for the slot on the right-hand side. He's also responsible for the backside over there where Mr. Schoolmaker was at. So as you see him, Coming off of a hash, okay? He's dropping back here to the middle, okay? We can try to get the goalpost out to view. All right, now all of a sudden you see Schoolmaker on his left side, okay? Xavier Woods, what else you see? Look to his right. You see Mr. Brandon Cook screaming down. Now, Dak is looking dead ahead at him, okay? He's making eye contact. He's making him real uncomfortable mm -hmm. back there, okay? So as he's looking at him, he's trying to decide, you see him set his feet. As soon as he sets his feet, it's a wrap like a gift on Christmas because he has either way. He can go over this way to Mr. Brandon Cooks right there in that scene, or he can swing around over on the left side and go to Mr. Schoolmaker. You guys already know what happened, okay? As he come over here to school, that's exactly where the ball goes. As the ball comes down the seam, he goes right down there. In this game right here, boom, he didn't have nobody hitting him in the real life. He had a hit on both sides, made a nice contested catch. You can count on seeing number 86 in the end zone a lot more going forward. Man, you, you just described that perfectly, Isaiah. When you talk about the safety position right there and the dilemma that you're in when you got two guys screaming down the field at you. That's why from a defensive standpoint, you got to get hands on. The slot right there, um, number 13 on Cooks, he did a decent job of getting hands on him, kind of rerouting him out there to make his route a little bit slower. But if you look at Schoolmaker, he was able to get a free release. Nobody out there put hands on him, and he's allowed to get down the field quick, fast, and in a hurry. And that's what the dilemma of the safety is in right now. Xavier Woods, which one do I choose? He chose the wrong one. Touchdown, Cowboys. Dak Prescott to Luke Schoonmaker resulted in a touchdown, and that was really how the Cowboys offense set the tone against the Carolina Panthers. They may have to have the defense continue setting the tone in week 12 as they welcome in the Washington Commanders for a Thanksgiving matchup. When we come back, we take a look at Jordan Lewis. Has he had a good season? Has he not had a good season? And how is he going to be challenged against this slot receiving core from Washington? Cowboys Hit Sticks, presented by Madden NFL 24, is also brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, the official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys, and by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. This 
This segment is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys. Welcome back into Hit Sticks. We want to remind you that there is free Christmas extravaganzas this week at the Star in Frisco. Friday and Saturday, bring the family out to the Tostitos Championship Plaza. The Cowboys cheerleaders, rowdy, former Cowboys players, current Cowboys players all in attendance. It is free fun for the entire family. Free parking at the same time too. Easy in, easy out. Come enjoy the Christmas extravaganzas Friday and Saturday at the Star in Frisco all holiday holiday season long as we welcome you back to hit sticks inside the star in Frisco. I'm Kyle Yeomanson this week. Of course, it is Thanksgiving and the Cowboys are facing the Washington Commanders. It's the 11th all time meeting between these two organizations on the Thanksgiving holiday, but this is a unique one because now you're going to get a chance to see some really talented slot receivers here. You've got a tight end in the slot and Logan Thomas. He's been fantastic all year. You've got Terry McLaurin here in the slot going up against Jordan Lewis. There's been some critique on Jordan Lewis as of late. Is he the weak link of that defense? Barry Church, I know you've been keeping an eye on the slot corner all year long. How is he going to be utilized the right way or challenged the wrong way against this Washington team? Well, when you talk about the slot corner position, I think it's one of the hardest, if not the hardest position on the defense to play. You got to be responsible for run. You got to be able to blitz and you got to be able to cover. And there's a ton of space. There's not just a sideline where you can push the receiver to. So the slot cornerback back position is extremely hard. But to me, it's all about leverage and finding out where your health is. In this particular defensive set, we're playing man to man like usual. Dan Quinn is one of the highest percentages in playing man to man in the National Football League. So everybody out there is in man to man coverage. I'm going to go ahead and press up because as a, as a slot corner, you got to get your hands on these yeah, guys. Buddy. You cannot let these guys are too quick. They're too fast. You can't let them just go out there with a free release. And then I'm also going to slide my guys on the outside because we have help on the inside. You know, Dan Quinn loves to do those rat players, whether it's a linebacker or it's a drop down safety to help those guys on in breaking routes. So as you see, I got Jordan Lewis hanging on the outside leverage of Terry McLaurin right there. And hopefully he stays out there and funnels everything to his help on the inside. A lot easier said than done. But if you're on your leverage out there, you're always in the right when it comes to your defense. It's a hard position, but I believe Jordan Lewis can do it. All right, we're going to see what he can do. Let's, Jay see, Lou. let's see what it's cracking with. Here we go. Okay, all right. Stayed out there, fed him right to it. Fed him right to it. You love to see it right there. You want to run it back I, one I more time? I you, I'm, I'm going to put the replay oh, on. Let's go with the I'm replay. You it. liked it. I loved I'll it right there. It. Let's go. All right, Mr. Replay Guy, can we go over to the slot? Right there, we see Jordan Lewis is in his outside shade, exactly where he's supposed to be to make sure he feeds everything to the inside. As you see, we got Curse as that far safety at the top. He's going to leak down and be that low rap player. We used to call him a lurk. So if we go ahead and run this play a little bit, you see at the line of scrimmage, Perfect technique from Jordan Lewis right there. Hands on, get a little bit of jam, slide to that low hip. You see where his eyes are, right on the hip of that wide receiver. And as he's breaking inside, he knows. He has curse right there in between the hashes to help him go ahead and knock out that inside route. Mm. Curse does an amazing job. You got to finish the play, though. <laughs> you got to finish the play and go ahead and score for your defense. But I love the technique from Jordan Lewis right there. He seems like he's beat right there, but as you see, that safety's coming over to help him. He knows where his help is. That was a great rep from Jordan Lewis in the slot position. You got to be on your leverage. Just to elaborate a little bit more on this, Terry McLaurin, even in that play that was broken up by J. Ron Curse, had some separation. That's one of the things he's really good at in the NFL. Maybe one of the most underrated receivers over the course of his career. Plus, he's had some success against the Cowboys. 27 receptions, 373 yards, three touchdowns. But when you look at what Terry McLaurin brings, Isaiah, how is it different than some of the other receivers that the Cowboys have seen this year? This dude's a technician. Mm -hmm. He is a route specialist. He's one of the best in the league, probably one of the most underrated uh, high caliber receivers in the league. And he's going to continue to improve, especially under the new direction of the offensive coordinator um, out there. Um, but the thing is, this dude, he's not small, right? So he has good size on him. He's quick. He's quick in and out of his breaks at the stem of the route. And this dude has some speed. You don't get the name Scary Terry because you're afraid. You get the name <laughs> Scary Terry because you make guys afraid. So, you know, you, you did a good job on the last play. Oh, because, you know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 I see you change it up. Just I change it up a little bit. Oh, okay. We're going to run it back one time. Let's do it. Then. I'm going to Scary Terry. You, that's where you're going. That's where I'm sure going. You I'm gonna telling go you that. right now, Jay Lou on Scary Terry, I don't know if that's what you want. Right, we're going to see, man. Right, I got faith in my guy. All right, let's see. 
Uh huh. A little short motion. You know. Oh, there it go. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh 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 yes, no. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, 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 that's a celebration. That wasn't a fumble. That's a oh, celebration. My goodness. Now we gotta just talked. Yeah, we gotta show you guys what happened here. Okay, I mm. went short motion. We know everything about short motion is you can't really play pressed up man to man, at least on the man that's on the motion uh, aspect of the play. Okay, so we come down in the motion. Boom, right off the back. Oh, my goodness. Hate to see it. Oh, no. You shoot your hands. I'm going to hit you with the swim move. Look so at there, his eyes. Yeah. Look at his eyes. Where are you looking at, Zaylou? I don't Lou? know what he's looking at. I want, so just in case y'all can't understand what's happening right here, look at the hand placement. He, go, he went straight Mr. Miyagi right here with his hands. Mm. You see him set him. Okay, sets to the inside. Oh, and that right there, that swoop. You see J. Lou shooting with his right hand. Scary Terry's going to take that right arm, come over the chop, over the top, and hit him with the chop suey. Bow. As soon as he hits him with the top, chop suey, look at the leverage. Look at where his shoulders are at. This oh. is what they teach you as a receiver. Drop your shoulder. Drive like you're coming out of the blocks. Only place that the defensive back can put his hands on is the back of your shoulders, at which point he's propelling you forward, all right? So that's exactly what he's doing right here. He's beat off the line of scrimmage right now. I used to play with a dude by the name of Randy Moss. Mm -hmm. Right now, Randy Moss would have threw his hand, hand up, up in the air. But Scary Terry decides to run his route. You see him, he's already looking oh, over his shoulder. Good. All right, Jay Lou's in no man's land. Ball gets dropped on him. That is the problem that you have when you're facing a big receiver. Jay Lou thinks he's on a slip and slide down there. That's not <laughs> what you want. Okay, you have to be careful when you decide to come up and try to put hands on this man. It's disrespectful. And if you go back, you'll see what happens when you don't play on your leverage of the side. I mean, we got there right now. You're at the line of scrimmage. You have all your helps inside. There's nothing outside the numbers for you. So you want to sit out there and force Terry to go inside. And as we play here, like you said, Mr. Oh. Miyagi, wax on, wax off. His hips are stuck. Once you get that hand over, your hips are stuck. And then you know the saying, if he's even, he's leaving. leaving. And that's a touchdown all day, every day. You got to play on your leverage. You got to get hands on these receivers. There's a great look at what Washington brings to the table from a passing game standpoint. But what about the ground game? Dallas has done a nice job of limiting individual rushers, but the yards per carry is still pretty high against that Dan Quinn defense. We'll talk about how they can improve in that area when we come back on Hit Sticks. This segment was brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys. Hey, this is Journey, 11-time Madden champion. And what got me started with Madden is when I was six years old, I was just watching my brothers play all the time. And they never loved me on the stick. So once I became like nine or 10 years old, they was like, okay, you can hop on with us. And then from there on, I just kept playing and playing and playing. I was really addicted. And uh, I just kept playing until I became as good as I am today. Welcome back in to Hit Sticks at the Star in Frisco. You just heard from Drini, 11-time Madden champion. And of course, it's Thanksgiving week, so we had to throw a little family element in there of how he got started in Madden. I know my family has always loved being around the video games and watching football on Thanksgiving. We're excited to see what the Cowboys and the Commanders can do at 325 on CBS this upcoming Thursday. Now, we want to see also what the Cowboys can do from a front seven standpoint against the run. They still haven't allowed a 100-yard rusher, but Barry Church, why is the yards per carry average still so high against this defense? Well, when you, when you look at this defense, you see some of those times where this defensive line, they're more about pass rushing than actually stopping the run. Everybody's going upfield trying to get to the quarterback and letting the running back seep through those lanes. We cannot have that. We need these defensive linemen stout and in their gaps. And when you talk about the second level, they're kind of undersized. All right, we know Damone Clark, big body linebacker, but when you got Marquise Bell in there, who's gotten a lot of reps at that linebacker spot, he's undersized. He's about 215 going against 300 pounders down there. It's not what you want to do so these linebackers have got to be quick they've got to be able to hit the hole and come downhill we saw a couple examples of that in the Panthers game a couple times they missed the gaps as well so these guys got to hit the right gap and make sure they're coming downhill and stop this running game before it starts I can see a lot of stunts from the defensive line and I can see these linebackers coming downhill hopefully they're able to make a play back there yeah see but the thing is Barry hope That's is not a strategy That's you true. know what I'm saying so true. Mr. Brian Robinson Jr. right here he's going to go off of what he saw on film this most recent mm -hmm. week and that was a Carolina the Panthers ability to run the ball against this defense up front. Right. So guess what? He saw the film. He's going to apply it right now. Oh, that's what he's going to do. That's what he's about to do right now. Hey, Rob, let's see what you got. Oh, we down here with it. Oh, Ooh, let's, go. let's go. Let's go. Let's oh, go. Another Ooh. example of the wrong gap. Oh, my Lord. Here we go. Let's go into uh, the, go to out, the replay. Let's, let's see what happens. 
You try to be aggressive. Go ahead and talk him through what you were thinking on Man, this. Man, from right here, I had a stunt going on, and I had this linebacker stunting into that A gap opposite of the of the center. But you see, the center went straight to that tackle on the right side, double team combo block. So I'm thinking, I got the right gap. I'm hitting mm. it head on. I'm gonna get this tackle for loss. You didn't see the crackback coming. I did not see the wham block coming from that, <laughs> that from that tight end Logan Thomas, as we see right there, mm. takes me out of the play. I hit the right gap. They had the right scheme, and that's what seems to happen with this Dallas Cowboys defense. Even if you're aggressive at the linebacker position, going for the right gap. Hooker, you got to make that tackle right there. <laughs> but we understand you've got to be able to hit the right gap, not just come down aggressively like I did, hit the right gap. You hit the wrong gap, and we'll see what happens right there. Be robbed for at least a 15-yard gain. And at the safety position, Hooker, you got to make that play. That's what the safety position is for. When things go awry and they start breaking yeah. those long runs. You're supposed to be the safety. You got to save you. You got to save the tackle. Hey, and my thing is, from an offensive perspective, we like to make sure we – li we like to make the defenders feel as if there's going to be a wide-open hole. I thought right? I was there. So whenever you see this gaping hole present itself as a defender, you might want to keep your head on the <laughs> swivel. Okay, right there. Just like on special teams, if the, if the C opens up, you might want to see what it is. Something's coming. Yeah, something coming. <laughs> All right, so right there, you see that hole. Boom, that is exactly how you lay it out. That's how you draw it up. Make that linebacker shoot the gap because that gap widens out. He thinks he has a sure shot at the running back. And then wham-o, in real life, that would have been knocked out. He might have saw some hole. stars, the galaxy, whatever else. Okay, and then we would have been straight up here. But he uses his twinkle toes, puts his foot in the ground. Okay, nice cut right here. Oh, now look at it. All he has right there. Oh, you had a chance to make a play in the backfield. You don't come downhill. Now you got one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, you got one-on-one -on -one in the hole. This is why Barry Church got paid so much money. Because when true. he came down hole, he was able to come up there, and he oh, didn't do that. Not that at all. No, no. he didn't do that right there. All I do is dance right here. Wham-o, oh, okay? Man. You can't do the wham-o. Mm -mm. You got to bring your hips, and you got to shoot the knees. Boom, right there. Big play for Brian Robinson Jr. and the Commanders. Hopefully, hopefully, it doesn't show up again on Sunday or Thursday. <laughs> Not only are the blocking schemes going to be a challenge for the Cowboys, but they also bring a couple big defensive tackles inside, including Jonathan Allen. How is that going to change things for Dak Prescott when we come back right after this? Back here on Hit Sticks from the Star in Frisco. It's the Cowboys and the Commanders on Thursday. And they have traded some guys away. The Commanders have on that defensive front seven, but they still have some interior defensive linemen that can cause problems. Isaiah Stanback, you've always said it, interior pressure is the hardest for a quarterback to deal with. How does Dak Prescott deal with it this week? Well, first of all, you tell your offensive lineman, make sure this dude doesn't even get anywhere close to me. So right off the bat, I'm going to see that pain, and, and, and the rest of the crew is over there on the left-hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the pass protection, and I'm going to send my pass protection to the left. Ooh. All right, yes, yeah, a little Beyonce right there, okay? Got to make sure that I'm protected on my back side because I can see everything front side, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm going to do to ensure that I don't make, make that those guys don't end up on my back. Without a doubt. And as you see, Allen right there with the X. There's a reason why that guy got the X on there, because he's an impact player. And you see who I got him over top of? Zach Martin, mm. future Hall of Famer. He got the star in his own right. But I'm going to tell you right now, the commanders defensively, they believe in their guys. And they don't care who they're lined up on, whether it's Tyron Smith, Tyler Smith, Zach Martin. It doesn't matter. Everybody gets some. And we're going to see if Zach Martin can handle it today. Here we go. Uh, oh, 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 getting pushed back. Oh, that was a close. Just missed the opportunity yeah, yeah. right there. Let's check real quick, okay, as to what happened up front. And that's what we're talking about. Protection looks good to me. Okay, you see everybody slide to the left. Mm -hmm. Everything's manned up. Boom, Tyron got man. Okay, Tyler has man. Zach is getting his, his fair share right there. You want to make sure that this does not happen too much because what happens is he starts getting in the vision of the quarterback, mm -hmm. and then Dak is unable to set his feet a lot of times, and then that's when you start seeing the incompletions kind of tally up much like you feel right here. Okay, if I would have been able to wait one half second, I would have been able to complete, complete this pass, and that would have been a big play. Probably a touchdown if you hit B. Cooks on the run, but because because big boy was in his face. Zach Martin allowed this pressure. That's the type of impact that it can have, even when they don't get sacks. So there's a really good look at how Jonathan Allen can disrupt things from Dak Prescott's standpoint. When we come back, does Madden think the Cowboys will be disrupted and that momentum halted on Thanksgiving against the Commanders? We go guys versus the game next.
Welcome back into Hit Sticks at the Star in Frisco. He's Barry Church. He's Isaiah Stanback. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Let's take a look at what Madden NFL 24 believes will happen on Thanksgiving. And they think the Washington Commanders are going to jump out to a hot start. They've led going into the fourth quarter, but C.D. Lamb, 42 yards, takes it to the house. Dallas leads 28-24. Curtis Samuel, though, just a couple minutes later, answers with a 20-yard touchdown reception. Washington up by three. That was before Brandon Aubrey kicks a 30. 7 yard field goal to tie it at 31. We're going to overtime where Washington kicks the first field goal of OT, but that gives an opportunity for the Dallas Cowboys. Brandon Cooks finds the end zone and the Cowboys win it in overtime. Let's hope it's not that close. Coming up on Thursday, Barry, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, I think it'll be a little bit closer than that Carolina game. Overtime, no question about it. It's not going <laughs> to happen. So, to me, I got the Cowboys winning this one. Give me a 31-17 type score. I'm, I'm right there with you, actually. I'm going to say 34-17. Okay. Just give it a little okay. extra oomph for that Dallas offense, but Dallas gets it done. I'm going to give it 27-10 Dallas. Ooh, I think it's going to be a little bit more challenge. I think it'll be a little bit lower scoring. I think they're going to provide some more challenges just because of the big dogs up front. Well, it's going to be fun either way. Thanksgiving is always a phenomenal phenomenal holiday full of family food and football and we've got it all for you here on hit sticks Isaiah stand back Barry Church myself along with Nate Newton will also be on Cowboys pregame live 2 p.m. Central Time on Thursday but that does it for us on hit sticks we will see you next week Cowboys hit sticks presented by Madden NFL 24 was also brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, the official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys, and by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys.